nothing like that sound on a Friday night. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm filming in my brand new kitchen, so I'm sorry if it's a bit echoey because we don't have any shelving up or anything at the minute. But this is the only place in the house that's got like decent lighting with it going dark early, so I hope the sound is okay. Just making myself a little gin with limon. Doesn't that just look beautiful? I just finished work and today I am filming a Q and A because it's been about four months since I last uploaded a video and so I asked for some questions on Instagram and I got quite a few juicy, awkward topics come through but I did say ask me anything so happy to oblige. So yeah, Q and A. I've had a parcel arrive today so I'm going to show you that first um, and I'm also going to be running a giveaway so let me tell you about that. Oh, I'm out of breath. Right, so the box behind me is from Cherries. They basically gave me a voucher to spend on their app and I asked if I could actually split that with a winner. So I've doubled up on some items but then threw in a nice few little treats as well and I want to run like a Lucky Dip style giveaway. But put it this way, if you like this sort of stuff, Febreze plugins, dish matics, minkies, the big one and the baby one, outdoorables, I've wanted to try that for ages, softener. Um, there's the pink stuff, the so flora, all sorts of stuff, plus a couple of nice little bits thrown in as well, which I just know anybody would love to win. All you're going to do is download the Cherries app and send me on Instagram a screenshot of the app downloaded onto any device. That is all you've got to do to enter the giveaway. I'd advise you to probably follow me on Instagram because that's where I'm going to announce the winner. And they've actually given me a discount code, so if you want to order anything from the Cherries app, You'll get 20% off your order at the checkout with this code on screen. I'll also leave it in the description as well. You're going to want to enter that giveaway if you like cleaning products and you just fancy a little treat. Let's jump on into these questions, shall we? Here we go. Right. Right, so somebody has asked the question, is it lonely living where you live? Um, you would think that, I think because when I go out of my front door and I'm taking Instagram stories, and it seems quite rural, you see waterfalls and things like that and I think people would assume that I live somewhere quite rural but actually I live about 10 minutes away from the main town centre, it's about 10 minutes drive to my mum's house, 10 minutes drive to my sister's house, my best friend lives, two of my best friends actually live within five minutes drive away from me. I do feel lonely sometimes, but that's because I work from home and I have been doing since the first lockdown. So, um, do you suffer with health anxiety after everything that you've been through? So for people that don't know, I've had cancer twice, um, quite close together as well. First time was cervical cancer, second time was breast cancer, and I was diagnosed within a, like a year apart. So. Naturally, yeah, I, I do suffer with general anxiety and depression. Um, depression wise, I feel like that's something that I've gone through in phases throughout my, like from teen years really, um, into adulthood and then definitely since cancer, never suffered with anxiety. I don't think before cancer, but Maybe it's just a different type of anxiety now because I never worried about my health before it. It's been coming up to five years since cervical cancer and four years since breast cancer. I think because I'm not going through treatment now and it's been a little while since my treatment, which is really the the crucial time when you're having your treatment and you just pass your treatment. Your a recurrence is more likely to happen earlier on, especially with cervical cancer. Um, so I feel like the more time goes on, the less anxious I feel about my health. I suffer more with, not health anxiety, but social anxiety and um, the fear of like making plans. It's very, very strange. The, the next questions are dog related. So we got a miniature schnauzer um, two years ago now, coming up to two years ago. Um, and it's about the sort of puppy phase. I could do like a more in-depth video about this, like the things I wish I would have known before getting a dog or owning a dog for the first time or picking that particular breed. <laughs> she's a good dog, like at the minute, she's just in the lounge now, she's not making any noise, no fuss. Um, but if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll know that we did have a neighbourly complaint not so long ago about her barking. Those are the terriers, so they naturally 
why are little guard dogs really? They hear a sound, they feel threatened and they bark. Um, but she is the friendliest dog ever. She's the best with children. But the question here is, would you um, recommend the breed 100%? I love her to bits and I actually can't imagine my life without an eye, which sounds a bit drastic, but she's done a lot for my mental state. Um, and another dog related question was, did you find having a puppy hard? Because ours is wild. Yes, I did find it really hard. Like the teething stage was horrific. She just used to bite you constantly. Working from home with a puppy was difficult as well because she demanded a lot of attention. But I wouldn't change her for the world and they do grow out of it. Like, put it this way, two months ago I would have never been able to leave shoes in the hallway and now there's three pairs of shoes out there and she's not touched them. So I feel like they just naturally grow up a little bit and just stop, like, get out of those bad habits. She can, she can be quite naughty sometimes, but she's generally, like, lovely and I love her to bits. Somebody's put, can we be friends? Absolutely, why the hell not? Like, I always think that anybody that follows me on Instagram, like, I kind of, like, see them as my friends. I don't have a lot of followers on there, um, but they're consistent followers. So, like, I tend to, when I've got a follower, like, they don't go away, even if I don't post. And, like, I genuinely feel like the people that I've got on my Instagram care about me and I care about them. So that's really nice. And, yeah, somebody said, is your hair real? If so, what are your tips to keeping it healthy? Don't wash it. I genuinely feel like the reason my hair has grown so much is because um, I wash it, like, once a week now. And I don't put any special treatments on it. Um... I don't get it done very often, so like, yeah, my ends are bleached, but I probably get my hair done once every sort of like four months, um, and I always get a root so that when my roots grow out, they don't look too bad now. My hair is in drastic need of sorting out, but it is in good condition. Um, my hairdresser said that to me last time I went in, and there are some supplements that you can take that are brilliant, and I took them uh, when my hair was growing back after cancer and yeah i swear by it it's um biotin you can buy it on amazon biotin and um sea kelp when i saw this next question come through i was a bit like um i don't want to answer that but i'm a bit of a prude so talking about sex creeps me out like i just don't like it i feel like loads of people have this thing where they talk openly about it and they say we should all be open about it, we should all be talking about sex, but I don't think so, like not for me. I don't speak to, <laughs> I don't speak to my friends about it. I feel really uncomfortable even talking about it to my sisters and my sisters don't talk about it to me. They might talk about it to their own friends. I don't really and probably never will. Because I know who sent this um, question in, I'm gonna answer it because it is, it is sex, but it's cancer related as well. So this particular girl is, around 25, I think she's 26 now, but she, I think she got breast cancer when she was 25, um, and she's basically saying, um, how was your sex life during cancer treatment? Mine's a flop, and um, I would say complicated. Because I had cancer in the two places that make me a woman, I had a massive confidence knock. It was only recently that I actually um, spoke to my Macmillan support um, lady and like heard these concerns to her and basically said, I feel extremely detached from my body in that sort of way. I feel like if somebody said to me now that you need to examine yourself down below, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could, yeah, I don't think I could do it. Even when I'm doing my regular breast checks, I find it really stressful checking my boobs now. Um, oh, I'm getting upset. And as time goes on, it's actually got more difficult for me. At the time when it was all happening, I'll be honest, like, it just wasn't a priority. My priority was getting back to being healthy. I'm very lucky um, with Tom that he's very in tune with me so he can read the room if that makes sense so I feel very very lucky to have him because he is very very considerate in that sense and I'm lucky that our relationship is based on so much more than that so um, 
I think as long as you've got somebody with you that's patient, um, you'll be okay, but the relationship side of cancer and sex and everything that goes together doesn't get spoken about enough and I've just said myself I don't like speaking about it and I don't but there's so much help out there not so much for breast cancer though breast cancer patients people might be wondering why sex is affected with breast cancer but it is because you well especially if you go into menopause with it which I am in early menopause now and that affects all sorts of stuff like um, not just physically with like dryness and stuff like that but also with um, your drive and your mood swings and feeling depressed and all the things that come with menopause that most people don't know about until they get to that stage in life um, so don't be hard on yourself because I know you I know you've said that you're struggling but me too so cheers and I know you're not on your own either because I know that there's so many young women going through the same thing that you are now and it's so normal. <laughs> this question spread across three questions, like it's quite like long. So finance tips. How did you guys get to where you are now? What do you do for work? And I hope that's not too nosy, but wondering how you got to where you are now, how long it took, any tips? your house is my dream house thank you very much um that sort of goes with another question as well which is an assumption that says you and tom both have good jobs which i'll go into in a minute but how did you get to where you are now in terms of this house well i'm 32 now tom's 30 when i met tom i was in quite a bit of debt actually i was in about four thousand pounds worth of debt and he'd always been really good with money, saved up, but he was still an apprentice at this time. Um, he had an engineering apprenticeship. And he saved up and he had the money to put down a deposit on a house. Now, we'd only been together about two years at this point. And me and Tom have always argued like cat and dog. Like, we have always had like a bickering relationship. And to be fair, I didn't know at that time we were going to spend the rest of our lives together. I'll be completely honest, I hoped we would. But I think it wouldn't have been very sensible for us to have made that commitment at that stage. So the first place, the first house that we bought was actually just in Tom's name. Um, he had the deposit for it, I didn't. I concentrated on clearing my debt that I already had so that I could start from a clean slate and actually start saving up. I can remember how I got into this debt as well. I maxed out a credit card when I found out that a Debenham store card that I had was actually a credit card and I just went mental. The one, um, my ex-boyfriend dumped me and I just went and spent it all in Debenhams on makeup and stuff. I was just very stupid with money as a kid, like when I say a kid, like 18. Um, and then I got a credit card so that I could go to Magaluf with my best friend. Like I did some really stupid things with it, but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I had to concentrate on um, paying off some debt and he bought the house that we first lived in and that was the first time I've ever lived rent free because I've always paid um, I've always paid my way while living at home and stuff and then, but Tom got this mortgage, I lived there with him and he didn't take rent from me, he let me save up. So I was like building up my own deposit whilst we lived in that first like bought house together. So that when we bought our last house, I could contribute and that we got that mortgage together and I had a deposit to put down. It was a really nice feeling to be able to do that and I felt so good. And once I'd got to that stage where I wasn't in debt anymore and I was seeing my savings bill building up, it became addictive and I wanted to have that money though. And I started coming round to Tom's way of thinking, which was save for a rainy day, be sensible with your money, be like savvy with your money only spend within your means and I've never lived like that um not in a spoiled way either because I've never been spoiled I just always I was just a bit stupid we ended up we made a little bit of money on that house like not a massive amount but we made a bit of profit from the sale we faced hardships with me having to go off sick with having cancer and stuff and um, my work at the time didn't have a sick pay policy so 
um, I could have been really screwed in that sense but luckily Tom has a good income and he was able to support us both at the time. We wouldn't have what we've got if Tom didn't have his job so um, I do have some tips though. When I was trying to save up my deposit I had a spreadsheet for everything. I decided each month what it was that I needed and what it was that I wanted and all those things that I wanted I prioritised them in order of what was the most important to me and then actually I got to a point where I was like not spending money, wa not wasting money on clothes anymore and even now like with us being in this house, like with us doing things up and stuff, I'm having to cut back massively. This cardigan is old and it's all bubbled and stuff and yeah I could buy, I could buy some new clothes but I'm thinking no because I want to be able to buy a mirror for the downstairs toilet so I, it's just sort of like making sure that you're prioritising where you're putting your money I suppose and being a bit more savvy, not looking on Instagram where it feels like everybody's got everything all of the time because it's not the case. Battery died, I hope we're in the same spot. I needed to come up for her to be fair because I can talk for England can't I? That sort of follows on to the next thing which was an assumption that basically said um, you and Tom both have good jobs. Um, I think that what is meant by that question is like well paid jobs because um, I think that's what people feel like when they say oh, have you got, you've got a good job or they mean pay. Um, to me a good job means a few different things so like for me I think I've got a good job. I've worked at um, a parcel company for 10 years now. So I've been in the same role the whole time. I haven't really <laughs> progressed that much in the grand scheme of things and I've just got a very normal job that doesn't pay particularly well. But I enjoy it. I love the people that I work with. I can shut my laptop at four o'clock every day and I don't have to think about work till the next day and that's what I like. I am very much a, which way around is this? Live to work, yeah. No, <laughs> wrong way around. I am very much a love, what? what am I trying to say? Live, left, love. No, I'm trying to say, I am a work to live kind of person. At the minute, I'm quite content because I'm back in work properly and I'm, and I'm doing what's expected of me. I couldn't do that before when I had cancer and I was going through treatment. My mind was focused solely on that. So that's enough for me at the minute. And, um, and then, yeah, Tom does have a good job. Um, he's really ambitious and I am all for that as well. Like, I understand that he works long hours and B gets paid for that. Um, I don't work long hours and I don't get paid for it. <laughs> it's as simple as that really. So I think we do have both have good jobs in different ways. And another thing about my job as well is it was very secure throughout lockdown, which I'm so grateful for because so many people got furloughed, so many people lost jobs and I work for a parcel company and throughout lockdown, as soon as lockdown hit, whoop, it just everything just went mental. So there was no way any of us were gonna get furloughed, which was so good to know at that time when everybody was really worried about the job. So I get paid bugger all. Do you know, by the way, on my cervical cancer story that I posted on here, I got a comment the other day that said, I'm struggling to watch, I'm struggling to watch this. If you didn't drink, you wouldn't get cancer. Somebody actually said that to me because I've got a gin while I'm telling my cervical cancer story. Sorry, but what, what, what planet is that person on? I, on? I don't listen to people unless they're oncologists for a start. If you're not an oncologist, don't come at me with your nutritional advice. Like, I'm sorry. No. If I get a little bit of pleasure of a gin on a Friday night, don't take that away from me, hon. So the next question is about children and it says, sorry if this is too personal, but are you ever going to adopt or foster, etc. if you want children? Um, first of all, I do want children. I've wanted children <clears throat> forever. I've always seen myself having a big family, which when you get told at the age of 27, when you've not had children yet, that you can't carry your own child. Um, you can only freeze your eggs and I was only able to freeze seven eggs. Um, it's heartbreaking. You know that your journey to becoming a mother, however that's going to be, is not going to be the conventional way. It's not going to be the way that you always imagined it being from being a little girl. 
Now, I've had a lot of time on my hands to actually come to terms with it and it took me a long, long time to think about the, well, to, to even imagine somebody else carrying mine and Tom's baby. And then I finally got there and started thinking, right, actually, I can handle it because time is a great healer, everyone says it, and you do, the longer time goes on, you do start to come to terms with things. And, and you also start opening your mind to other options. I hope that we will grow our family. Um, I just don't know yet how that's gonna happen or what that looks like for us, but adoption and fostering, I would never rule that out, definitely not. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but don't worry about asking that question because I don't mind talking about it. Actually, I find it quite therapeutic to talk about my f f f f f fertility. Oh, a light-hearted one. What's your dream Christmas present this year? Honestly, I want... <laughs> this is why I'm such a granny. I really want the Bissell Pet Spot Pro thing. It's like a sofa cleaner um, for pets. I need it so bad. Like... I want it, it's, I really want the Dyson Air app, um, but I've come to terms with the fact that I'm probably not going to get that, so that's why I'm going to chop all my hair off instead, well, to about there, because um, I feel like this length hair is like amazing with the Dyson Air app, and at the minute I can't do anything with it, but then I just bought that Peloton bike, so I can't have a Dyson as well, it was one or the other, so yeah, that's it, I'm well, I don't think we're going to go mad on each other this Christmas. Somebody's put how, how are the renovations coming along and well, um, you haven't seen this part of the kitchen on YouTube. I've shown it on my Instagram. Um, I did say on YouTube that we were going to have a mirror splash back there. That's probably a good thing that we don't because you'll be able to see me from all angles, which is not what I want to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with how that's looking. Um, kitchen is almost finished now. I'm going to be doing more videos um, about the renovations. So around Christmas time, we're starting on the office room, which is just behind this room. Um, still need to paint the utility wall. I've got loads of doors to paint and we're having a weekend just like finishing off loads of jobs downstairs. Um, we've decided to close off between the dining room and the living room now and have them as two separate rooms. So that's all going to be getting done on the run up to Christmas. Um, as long as I have my Christmas tree up and everything feeling cosy by about the 15th of December this year, I'll be happy. Um, last year we did get end up getting a Christmas tree on Christmas Eve and putting it up on Christmas Eve. And I got it for a pound from the range which was just incredible. Um, so yeah. Uh, that answers all the questions. Like I did get a few more than that but they all sort of were similar um so i hope i've answered everybody's questions and um, if you want to ask me anything else leave it in the comments i might do a part two to this video yeah camera battery definitely died again but i just wanted to say thank you so much everybody for watching this video if you haven't subscribed then i would love for you to hit subscribe and um, definitely got a lot more to show you since the time, last time i uploaded so i'll be vlogging soon i also want to do uh, organizing every cupboard in my kitchen let me give you a little teaser and show you this incredible invention I came up with last night, which is in this drawer here, in my kitchen, I've got all my wax melts. Guess where I've got this insert from? A Ferrero Rocher box. Yeah, thanks again for watching this video, everybody. I really hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.